Okay, so this is the second um, video installation for the Adventures in Sierra Hotel acquisition model. Uh, if you recall in the first one, we did a, uh, a brief look at all of the tabs in the model, um, and then we went in depth on the, uh, the summary tab. And so in this video, um, I would like to review the next two tabs, which is the cash flow summary tab and the operating cash flow tab. All right, so let's walk through the cash flow summary tab. Um, so the way I like to break out my cash flow summary tabs is, um, you know, not only the normal chronological order from left to right, but I also like to do it um, chronologically from top to bottom on an unlevered basis. Um, and what I mean by that is here you'll see we have all of our acquisitions costs in the top. We have the operating details uh, in the middle section, and then on underneath that we have our exit. Um, assumptions. And so in the top section for our acquisition costs, this all comes straight from the summary tab. Um, and we walk through how to derive these numbers um, in the first video in this acquisitions assumptions uh, box here. Um, so underneath that, we have the high level operating information. So this, if, if you look as I scroll up and down on these numbers here and to the, the right and to the left, you'll notice that all the way down to cash flow from operations, it's the same formula. And the reason that is, is because I'm using this one formula, index match match, which I will go over in a, sec in a separate video about how to, how to use this formula. This is basically picking up information on a less detailed basis from the, uh, the operating cash flow statement. So here you'll notice, let's use departmental revenues, for example. We have departmental revenues, we have room revenue, F&B, and then we have a lot of detail in the F&B. We have other operating departments, and then we have more detail here. Then we have a, um, the total revenue summed up at the bottom. Well, in the cash flow summary, we're not going to get into all that detail. We're just going to give a high level departmental revenues. Here you have the room revenue, the F&B, um, other operating departments, and then total revenue. And so this is the same for all of the um, different sections of the operating cash flow. It's all just rolled up and, and it's just the high level information for each uh, individual section. So moving down, um, we have our exit assumptions. We have our sales price, um, sales expense, and then uh, the sales proceeds. And this is all coming from the summary tab as well. And one thing to note is that this, this will update as we change the hold period. And as I showed you in the uh, first video, we went over the summary tab. Um, there is a, a lot of conditional formatting here. So as we change the hold period, so here we currently have 10 years. Let's, let's make this five, for example. So you'll notice now that this uh, is conditional formatted to just only show you up to year five. So the exit price and the exit details update um, as well as the formatting of the sheet. And this is helpful. So, you know, if you want to print this out, as I mentioned in the other video, you want to print this out and, and review this with third parties, it will give you the exact information you need and you won't have to go and manually format this yourself. Okay. So below that we have our debt assumptions and all of this comes in as well from the uh, summary tab. So we have our loan disbursement amount, which you can see, uh, summary C34. And we have our debt service. And so here you'll see we have um, in these four periods, we have the same payment. And then you'll notice in the fifth period, the payment goes up. Um, we have the ability in this model to do interest only payments. So if we go back up to the summary tab and we walk through this in the first video, You'll see here we have interest only period of four years. And then after that, we start paying interest and principal. All right, so just to double check that this is working in proper order, let's just change the interest only period to two years. And you'll see we have our uh, two years of interest payments and then we start to pay our uh, principal. Okay, and then below that we have our uh, loan repayment. 
um, and then underneath our debt details, we have our unlevered cash flow rolled up, which again is just our all of our cash flow without any debt considerations. And then we have our levered cash flow, which is our unlevered cash flow less the debt. All right, so that's really the cash flow summary. And so below that, um, we look at a couple of return metrics that are that are um, that are valued on an annual basis. Um, in the first video, we went through the free and clear return and the cash on cash return. So we're not going to go through that again. Um, and then below that, we have some risk metrics, um, which are based really on the debt. So we have our debt service coverage ratio, which here it's our cash flow from operations. Uh, divided by our, our loan payment. Um, this is a more conservative version of the formula. In a lot of cases, you can do the NOI divided by the debt service. Um, but you know, as I said, this is more conservative because there's less cash available uh, to pay the debt. So, um, you know, depending on how you who you're presenting this to or how you want to look at it. Uh, but in this case, we're going more conservative. And below that, we have our debt yield which is the NOI uh, divided by the remaining principal left uh, be repaid on the loan. All right, so that's it for the cash flow summary. And, you know, at the beginning of the video, I know I said I was going to walk through both the cash flow summary and the uh, operating cash flow statement, but I think for uh, purposes of organization, I'm going to stop here and um, we'll do the, the operating cash flow statement in uh, the next video. All right, thanks for watching.